What is happening guys? Welcome back. I hope you've all had an amazing Christmas and are enjoying a little bit of time off spent with your loved ones, having a bit of a chill out, eating probably too much food after a busy and quite frankly weird year again. So let's get a little bit more done on a Mark 1 Golf. In the last episode, we got the rear archery sorted out and the underside primed. So the next thing that we need to now move on to is sorting out the seam sealer. So we've got to go around with some masking tape and mask either side of where we want the seam sealer to go. We then apply the seam sealer, which I've opted for Stark MPU sealer, which I've spoke to a few people about they're using is pretty decent. So we're gonna get that down, sat on a wheel in front of the heater so we can heat it up because it's quite a thick material. Oh, yeah, quite thick um, mastic material. So we'll warm it up, soften that down, We'll then use the um, gun, a applicator gun, silicon applicator gun, to apply that on to the car. And we'll then go over it with a brush to brush it nice and flat. With the tape, will give us a nice straight edge wherever we don't want the sealant to be. And hopefully that'll be it. Well, that's the plan anyway. I've never done it, but let's get the heater on, get it warmed up and give it a go. Right, we've got some of it taped off and you'll see that I started taking it off and then got bored and started trying to do it without any tape and it it doesn't look horrendous but it doesn't my OCD it doesn't it doesn't look right. So I've masked out where I can. There are areas where masking out isn't necessarily going to be the easiest of things, so we're just gonna have to try and brush it on and get it as best as we can. We're putting Gravitex on the top, which is quite thick anyway, which is like the stone chip. Um, and I want to get a good layer of that one. So hoping as much as I don't like saying, it, I'm hoping that is going to cover a fair amount of um, this anyway. And you won't notice it when that's on. So I'm going to jump back in to try and a bit more and do it with the tape and see if it's any neater and see if it looks any better. So let's give that a go. There we go, seam sealer is done. Looks obviously a lot neater when we do the masking tape on it, but there's areas where masking it out, it's just too difficult. Um, and I'd rather it look messy and do what it's supposed to do than it look neat and not do what it's supposed to do. So it's all gonna be covered over in Gravitex anyway. Um, but yeah, that is the majority of it done. There's a couple of little areas I've still got to do, but I don't wanna go opening another tube of it um, until I've got somewhere else prepared. Um, but yeah, that's the majority of the underside of the car done. So something else that we've had to do is for the spare wheel tub, there's a plate that goes in there, which is this. And for some reason, I only ordered one. So I've just made another one with the same lip detail around it. I've got to use the, I've got to mastic those in with a seam sealer so that they're stuck in and going off. But I really want to leave the car flat for a bit for them to go off. Um, and what I want to do now it's so in here we've welded all the way along this sill um and the rear arches we've welded round and various places we've welded that we can't get to to put 
any primer or anything on. So I've well pre-primed the panel when I put the panel on, but the actual weld itself is going to be essentially raw metal that will rust. So the idea we've had, and what we're going to do is we're going to put some built hamber hydrate 80, which is a sort of rust converter, converts it back to metal and treats rust and stops it going any further. So what I'm going to do is use a Schultz gun with a hose on it, which has got the end on it that fires it and sprays it everywhere, which you normally use for um, like cavity waxing. Um, but we've got a Gravi Gravitex bottle, which is what we're going to be using as the undersealer. We've emptied it out, cleaned it out. I'm going to put the built hammer in that, put it on the gun. And then between us, me and Rich are going to put the nozzle to the end, turn it on so it's coming out, pull it back. And essentially, or in theory, that will cover the insides of everywhere in a rust conversion, which should stop any more rust developing. Well, that's the idea at least. So we're going to try and get it in all the crevices, the rear chassis legs here, down here, up those chassis legs. We can try and get everywhere that we can that we can't get to with a normal gun. So we'll give that a go, see how that goes. can see in there all the blue we've got it in there we've got it in the sills in the chassis rails here that i've drilled a hole for um in all the back chassis sections we even then went in you can see down there in the rear arch down that point there where the outer arch has been welded so hopefully that is going to help stop any further rust issues continuing from the work we've done and coming from the inside out prime done seam seal done and all of the rust conversion inside done so the next thing we need to do is mask it out ready for putting the undercoat on undercoat under seal um so yeah we're going to leave it now sort of overnight or it's uh what day is it now friday now so i might leave it till monday i'm not sure yet we'll see um but yeah that's that see you back whenever i decide to come and carry on and welcome back so monday morning we're back in Seeing see like is all dry now, car is all rolled over. Rich has made a start on it, and yeah, all that is looking pretty nice. So we've made a start on, or Rich has made a start, I should say, on masking. I'm masking all the holes out where we don't want the underseal to go through masking threads and things out. We've picked a few lines of where we want to run uh, the underseal up to. Um, and then we've decided that the line of this sealant here is going to finish about five mil ish below um, the trim that sits in here, just so that you are looking down, you've got a nice paint finish. Um, what last? The blade. Oh, the blade. It's on the bench. I've just put it on the bench. You wandered off. A bit. I wandered off a bit. Um, so yeah. Made a start on that, and now we're going around and getting all the edges caught. Then we'll put polythene wherever it is. Put this over the top, bag it up, put the floor, put it on the floor, set the gun up and give it a go. Now, I drilled these holes in the sill uh, to obviously get in with the rust um, converter. And we then have, uh, I bought some bungs to go over it. Are you looking for this one? That's the badge. Um, and then, yeah, I bought wherever they've gone, there's some rubber grommets somewhere so i'm going to put rubber grommets in them and then we'll seam seal over the top of them as they sort of would from factory so yeah that looks good so we'll just chuck the gopro on and we'll carry on getting it masked up and hopefully today we'll get to uh, get the underseal on So we're just getting part way through bagging and tagging the old Mark 1 and we've had a little delivery turned up. So, no compressor. So I have been talking with um, the guys from GT Air for quite a while now. 
Um, and I went over for a meeting the other day um, and we had a bit of a chat back and forth. And yeah, I'm now working with GT Air, who have very, very kindly loaned me a compressor um, to get me by because mine blew up a few weeks ago. So yeah, GT Air supplied me with a burrish, I think I'm saying that right, um, compressor, 90 litre. Um, and in theory, it should do everything that we need it to in here and run everything that we need it to. Um, yeah, we'll get it all built up and give it a go. They've sent me, which hasn't turned on, that's lorry leaving now. They've sent me a um, high flow kit, which basically, instead of it coming, the air coming out of here, because this is a bit of a restrictive side, it comes directly out of the end um, with all high flow, bigger size pipes and things. Um, to give you better del air delivery and uh, a constant and all sorts of things. There's a video on that, which I'll put a link in the description to, as I will put a link in the description to their socials and their website. They've got some pretty pretty cool products on, and I'm, I've got a lot more stuff coming from them. So, yeah, head over, check their website out, because you never know. They might have something that you need. Right, let's get this put together, and then we'll continue doing that, and we'll give it a little whirl if the other bits turn up when we spray in the... Um, stone chip on the bottom of the car. There's the car, all masked off. We've masked and bagged the top of it um, and then masked up to various lines. Trying to just keep it and make it look as neat as possible. Um, so yeah, into there, we've gone to the top of the wing, down the A-post. We've decided to go up here, I'm not sure if I mentioned it already, but we've decided to go just below the trim line up here. Um, oh, we need to put them bungs in, whatever I've done with them. And then we can get on with applying the Gravitex. And would you look at that. So that is the stone chip done on the underside, front arches, both sides, all the underside. The sills are done um, up to that line there, as we showed you. Um, all in the rear arches are done, all around here is done and caked in it. And yeah, looking absolutely trick. You might have noticed in that little clip that there are two squares on the floor that haven't got any stone chip on them. Now, the reason for that is there's a jigging point that mounts to there. And for some reason I've managed, or somehow I've managed to lose one of the original Mark 1 ones. So I've ordered some Mark 2 ones, but with the postage the way it is at the minute, they haven't turned up yet. So I've just masked them out. Um, we'll clean this primer back, weld them on, reprime, mask the area out, reprime them, and then stone chip them and just blend the sort of stone chip. And there's a bit here that I've missed it, I didn't spot, but yeah. For the most part, it's covered in stone chip. So spotted that I'm opted to use a Gravitex Plus. Um, people say use Raptor and things, but from what I've read, Raptor is hard. This Gravitex is still sort of, it's, well, it's, it's stone chip, it's what it needs to be. It's a bit rubbery so that stones and things will bounce off it. It is completely overpaintable, so we will be painting um, the underside body colour, but it just gives 
the arches, which, and I have absolutely lamped it on these arches, front and rear, um, because we're not going to be running any sort of plastic guards. I've absolutely lamped it on there to try and give it as much protection as we can. But yeah, it's looking absolutely trick. And I, I said it in the last one, I never thought I'd see the day where the underside of the car was re-stone chipped and ready for paint. The next thing to move on to then is going to be body working the engine bay, body working and sorting out seam sealing the inside of the car. And then we move on to the outside. So yeah, that's going to be the next thing to roll on with. Hope you all have an amazing new year. I'm probably not going to be putting a video out around new year. I'm going to have a nice Christmas break, get refreshed, ready to come back in the new year and hit this as hard as I can. Because I've got some goals I want to set myself to try and get this done. So we can possibly, as long as the government allows, hit some shows in it next year. But yeah, that's that one then, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Until next time, enjoy.